Hello, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Welcome to another Screen Stories Cutaway where we'll chat about progressive complication. If you haven't already, check out episode two of my six steps to writing a screenplay where we cover plot, which gives great context to this. Because progressive complication is such a big chunk of your structured story, it can feel like an intimidating mass of blank pages to tackle. So if you're struggling, look at Blake Snyder's outline from Save the Cat, which breaks things down a bit more. That too is in the plot episode. So, progressive complication takes you from the inciting incident to your crisis and climax. The point of progressive complication is to keep the film feeling like it's always got momentum and forward motion. When it feels like things are moving forward, your audience is checking their watch or phones. Great. I think I got it. But just in case, tell me the whole thing again. I wasn't listening. <gasps> it's really like it sounds. Things don't need to remain complicated. Every step forward, they need to get more complicated. We also need to be constantly passing the point of no return. As each complication arises, we should feel it's impossible for the protagonist to simply call it quits and go back to how things were before. Each action should take more willpower than those that precede it. So just like in real life, your character when faced with a challenge should always start by taking the minimum possible action to achieve his desire. When that fails, which it will, your next action must take more willpower and so on until the point where they must risk it all to have it all. In life, we take the minimum possible action and 99% of the time that takes us one step closer to our goal. Our expected result is the same as the reality. In story, that's not the case. Story takes place in the gap between expectation and reality. Kyle, I'll just bash it with a rock! Gordon, you don't want to do that. Oh, but I do! For example, Nicholas Angel's goal is to mobilise the lackluster police force around him and bring justice to the village of Sanford. Excuse me. What? When's your birthday? 22nd of February. What year? Every year. Get out! To that end, he keeps displaying exemplary police work and bringing in criminals for processing. Oh, well, I see you've already arrested the old village. Not exactly. However, where we might expect this to provide justice, his reality is that his peers and superiors not only shrug him off... Thanks. And yet we respond by not taking a single punitive measure. <laughs> That's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> like the biscuits, isn't it? <laughs> but cultivate hostility towards him for his efforts. We're oh, sucking it, town mouse. Yeah, you want to be a big cop in a small town? Fuck off up the model village. He goes to greater and greater lengths, putting himself in more and more danger to try and prove that there are more and more serious crimes taking place. So I think all these deaths are linked. I think Tim Messenger was murdered. But his complication is progressive, as he finds himself more and more ostracised for his actions. Maybe it was the swan. Apparently, they could break a man's arm or blow up a man's house. <laughs> Listen, you peril. Whoa, 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 Nick. When he finally comes close to solving the case, establishing that there are multiple perpetrators... No luck catching them killers, then. It's just the one killer, actually. We find a huge gap between the expectation that the Force will finally take him seriously and the reality that they, too, are part of the group committing the crimes. Yet still, he pursues his goal of justice past the point of no return. And I'm afraid you're going to have to come with me. You are all going to have to come with me. No, Nicholas. I'm afraid it is you who is going to have to come with us. And then again, his dire situation adds more complication with a very personal blow. Daddy, no! So you see how in his journey towards justice, he keeps taking what he sees as the logical next step. Simon Skinner, I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Leslie Tiller. And each time, because of the gap between expectation and reality, it actually moves him further from it. Things get exponentially worse as he progresses. The key is that we don't just have him in a bad situation and have bad things happen to him. We start in a bad situation, which gets progressively worse, because progressively worse things happen to him. A great way to make this actionable is to look at whatever value you're tracking and give it a quantifiable scale. So in an action film, you're generally tracking the risk to your protagonist's well-being. You want to be able to label the best to worst case scenario along a scale, say 1 to 10, and then go through your scenes making sure the risk level is progressively moving up that scale, rather than plateauing or reversing. A great example of this done well is Die Hard, where he's in quite constant threat from the start to the finish. The level of that threat is constantly increasing as John McClane suffers through a gauntlet of injuries and nail-biting near misses all the way to the climax. Shoot the glass. 
What kind of odds am I getting? You don't want to know. So, allow your protagonist to start with the minimum possible action in pursuit of his goal. Use the gap between expectation and reality to constantly pull your character further from his goal. Ensure the complication is always increasing, no matter what your particular tract value is. As I've said before, your plot is a specifically designed torture device to challenge your protagonist to reach their limits. Test them and let them show you what they're made of. So that's a quick look at progressive complication. I think everyone learns differently, and different things stick for different people, so as always I invite you to add your own input here in the comments. Tell me what I've missed, keep the conversation going, and let's help each other out. Like you, I'm here to learn. And please like, share, subscribe, and I'll happily take suggestions for upcoming episodes, so let me know if there's anything else you want to know more about. See you next time.